everyone, it's Bean Label. I'm Liam, and I'm at Quarter Horse Coffee so with Nathan. Um, so I'm going to start with what we're drinking. Tell us what we're drinking, what flavours I'm looking for. Yeah, so uh, this is our Peru. Um, pretty balanced filter coffee. Yeah. Uh, kind of chocolatey, a little bit of cherry at the end, uh, sweet. Uh, yeah, it's an all arounder. So. And tasty. Very good. You got that? It's very sweet, there's a bit of acidity as well, it's not just a little pleasant. Yeah. Like, it's, not, yeah, yeah. Like, it's not flat, it's not flat. Like, no. no, it's not like our Brazil, it's uh, more kind of nutty chocolate. Yeah, yeah. So. No, it's nice, it's interesting. So, let's start with this flavor. Is, was this roasted here? Yep, uh, yep okay. roasted uh, just over there. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so basically it's a coffee shop and a and restaurant. Rest, Certainly yeah. is in Birmingham. Um, so we'll come back to that. So let's go. Let's go to the start. Sure. You know, to the Oxford where it started. So tell us about how that came about. Okay. Um, so I moved to Oxford about four years ago, and uh, I've been working on coffee for almost a decade, doing kind of every other job other than owning my own shop. So I uh, thought now is the time that we moved to Oxford and you know, opened up a little little cafe on Cowley Road um, in 2012. Yeah. And yeah, it was really popular, um, it did really well, and it's still doing well, it keeps doing it so. Um, but then we wanted to expand and do another shop and start roasting around, and uh, that led us to Birmingham, where my wife's from, and found a nice location here just outside the city center, and yeah, started roasting about a year and a half ago. Nice. It's a beautiful space, like really big, yeah. you know, it's a clean, modern space. Um, Alright, so let me go back then, because you know, it's not an Oxford or London accent, or I'm probably no, no. So, and you're working 10 years in coffee, yeah. so let's go back to where that was, what you were doing, because that's sure. interesting. Uh, I'm from Chicago, uh, and I started working in coffee actually at a Lavazza shop, so one of the few outside of it yeah. is, is uh, <laughs> in Chicago. When was that? When was that? 2006 maybe? Wow. So, somewhere around there. Uh, but yeah, that's where I learned how to do coffee, made loads of, you know, it was a very busy kind of uh, city center shop and uh, worked there for a while, learned how to do latte art and all and the basics and, and then... So you're barista. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, kind of, it was, it was mainly just a job, but I always loved coffee, so uh, then when I moved uh, to finish my university somewhere else, there was a local coffee shop and roaster there. Uh, I, Coffee Hound. Uh, this is Chicago still, yeah? Well, it's, it's outside of Chicago. It's oh. called Bloomington Normal, Illinois. And, uh, so there I, I worked as a barista, I uh, roasted a little bit, um, and I also worked at a shop in Chicago called Metropolis Coffee, and there I roasted too. Um, so yeah, I did, worked for, for them and, and for everyone, and then moved to London in 2010, 2010. And worked at a couple of different shops in London. I worked at uh, Dose and Store Street Espresso. And then uh, I worked for a company called Brew by Hand for a bit that worked out of Coffee Hit and Square Mile. Yeah. And I got to learn a lot, a lot in that like, kind of two years of London. So I was coming off the back of that that we opened up the, the Oxford Show. Yeah. I mean, I, and that is quite, quite an education. Coffee. <laughs> That's a really great foundation before you start, start your own shop. Um, so you came to London to study your MA, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that was in? Uh, UCL. Uh, so I did a human rights master's at UCL and then uh, just kept working at coffee after I graduated. And blah, blah. Right, so you keep going. You didn't go into like career, corporate job, it was straight into coffee. No, no, I know. Uh, Pretty much coffee was a thing I did while I was studying. Um, so I did it while I was doing my undergrad. I took a couple of years off before I did my master's and just worked full time in a coffee shop. And then worked in the coffee shop while I was doing my master's. And just um, I kept saying I, I just wasn't done with it. And I guess I'm still not done with it. So it's uh, yeah, I just kind of as long as I enjoy it, I keep doing it. No, that's great. So you so it was always in your mind that you were. Well, for a long time, it was in your mind that this was going to be your thing? Uh, I mean, not for that long. I mean, not until, really it was the end of the Masters when I kind of thought, 
uh, you know, I'm not done, let's make more of a career career out of it. It was always just a, a thing I enjoyed and I did while I was studying. Um, so. I think that's interesting, Alan, because a lot of people, you know, they're, they're, um, they won't have the courage to, to do that and they'll, they'll do what they think is, is, is the part that, you know, you're supposed to take and then they get a job and they go, no, this is killing me, and then they go, oh, no, well, I guess I got lucky that no one ever hired me. Out, so, yeah. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it just worked out yeah, uh, really well that uh, opportunities came and I, I took them. And, yeah, people say that, that you know, it, it's brave or something like that, but I, I talk to a lot of small business owners. And so it's, it's a thing we love and then we get the chance to do it, so we just do it. Um, it seems normal to us. Okay. So, Oxford, Oxford was going well, and he's going well. Yeah. And you decided Birmingham. Um, was it your wife from Birmingham? Yeah. Was it, was it uh, because of uh, family? Yeah, half or? family, but also, you know, we needed the space to roast. And um, getting a nice big space in city centre in Oxford just wasn't possible. Yeah. Um, um, we got lucky enough to find this space. It's really central and really big. So it ticked all the boxes. Um, and yeah, just a little bit of a leap of faith, too. Just kind of, let's see, let's do it. So, um, but it was the roasting that, that brought us up here. We wanted to, to roast and do more on that side. And so you got the roast there in here. So you've seen from the from the, the pictures uh, that you've basically got the same space roasting yeah. on one side, uh, uh, shot the other side. Um, what, what was the kind of what was the reason to so you wanted to roast? Yeah. What was the reason to open up the coffee shop store? Um, the main thing was to kind of engage customers a little bit more, um, show them. How, you know, where coffee comes from. You know. It's amazing how many people uh, you know, just, just don't quite know the process, so we get the chance to kind of show them how it works, and uh, well, that's exciting. But also, you know, I thought you know we could get a, a site that be an industrial unit somewhere, and it'd be really cheap. But then my life would be sitting alone in an industrial unit. And, uh, I kind of thought. They, kind of, they, they work off of each other. You know? It makes my job a lot better to be around customers, to see people, to be able to the buzz. And I think it makes the cafe a little bit nicer to kind of have the showpiece. And, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's good. It always seemed like a waste uh, to me to just roast on its own. And, uh, maybe it's a bit simpler, but I, I think it's nice. It's nice to show the space. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. It's a bit of, uh, bit of a show. Yeah. Everyone likes it. And like you say, it um, doesn't need to be isolated. Why not? No. Yeah. Share the show. Yeah. Um, and I imagine, yeah, you've been yeah, you've been working in coffee shops for that for so long with people. That would have been quite a change to think yeah. be on your own in some of you get. Yeah, I like people. I like being around people. Yeah. So uh, the idea of sitting alone in a in a warehouse didn't, didn't really appeal to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I can't stand that. Um so do you find, is there like a big difference between like the, uh, the, the scene, the market in Birmingham as opposed to Oxford? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, obviously there's, there's students of both, but uh, the universities kind of dominate Oxford. Um, and for a long time, you know, there, were, there wasn't that many coffee shops in Oxford, but now it's completely the other way. So there's loads of shops, loads of choice, customers are a lot more educated and, uh, you know, cafe culture is big in Oxford, especially where we're at. Uh, lots of people revising, studying, meeting. Um, Birmingham is very different. It's a bit newer on the coffee scene, uh, smaller of a scene, but with more potential people who, who want to have coffee shops. So um, it's all very city center focused, and we're just a little bit out. So uh, we get more, less passing trade, and more people come here for meetings. Uh, they come here for breakfast. Come here to, Know, hang out with friends, so it's a more of a kind of relaxed vibe in this one. Um, yeah. And word of mouth, I guess. If you're yeah. passing, you know, spreading the word that there's this really cool place, roast, and it yeah. uh, says great coffee as well. Um, so, so that also, like, I'm really interested in um, understanding because you've worked so long in uh, in the US yeah. market. Was uh, obviously I know that was a few years ago. But when you switched to the UK, what, what were the differences like between the customers and, and the product? Were there any differences? Yeah, no, there's some big differences. Um, 
espresso was, was especially when I came in 2010, espresso was a lot bigger than filter coffee. Um, and in America, it's, it's you know, very different. You know, a filter is pretty standard. Everyone drinks filter coffee. Um, so that's been a big change, and filter's gotten bigger here. Um, drink sizes, obviously, in America, huge drinks. Um, and here, they're a lot smaller. But then on the, on the customer side, you know, in America, we're we're used to kind of a much quicker service. Um, it's kind of a, cafes are, there's a lot more through traffic. And, and even if you are staying, you probably still kind of expect a quicker turnover. I was surprised at how customers here are more than happy to wait. So they'll wait to order, they'll wait to get their drinks. And uh, in a quality focused environment like ours, it's kind of, it's a bit nicer. Uh, we know we can take our time and, and craft the drink the way that we want, and the customer's not going to get too, too angry. Um, so, yeah, but, uh, you know, but then I guess on the other side, it's in America, more people drink coffee. So it's, uh, and there's a lot more customers. Do, do they, have. like, as a, uh, there's more people there, proportionally, is that, is that still, is that still? I think so, yeah. Well, it's a bit, I suppose, so part, part, I think it, here, yeah. this is the first, uh, kind of this generation is the first, that like, are now drinking more coffee than tea. Um, so, I think that's, yeah, I mean, the tea culture was, it's basically the coffee culture. Okay. Uh, yeah. And what about like the? Because you know, builders tea. You know, if you like tea, you know, builders tea is pretty awful. But that's what a lot of people drink. Yeah. Is it the same in America for yeah. coffee? So speciality coffee. Is that even a thing in America? Yeah. Or is is, is is there like speciality coffee and then coffee? Or? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you, it, it's got the full range, just like anywhere else. You've got your speciality coffee shops, and you've got your you know, your, your diner cheap coffee or your gas station coffee. Um, yeah, I, th I think the, maybe the biggest difference as far as consumers in America is that instant isn't that popular in America. Yeah. Um, almost everyone has a, a home trip coffee. Yeah, there. yeah. Um, so that was a, a big difference here. It's kind of the customers either were really into their specialty coffee or they could care less and they didn't understand what was different between instant and not. Um, but, you know, these are obviously general. It's, uh, it's all different, and, I, and I've been here the last five years anyway, so there's been loads of changes in America that I'm not even sure I know fully. Yeah. Um, have, you, have you found loads of changes here in the five years? Uh, huge, yeah. I mean, when I when I got here to London, it was uh, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 shops uh, that were kind of specially focused, and now Hundreds. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it exploded. And um, same, you know, when we opened in Oxford, there were about three, maybe four shops. Yeah. Now there's probably about twelve. Um, and even in Birmingham too. When I first started coming to Birmingham, there was one. Yeah. And uh, you know, now maybe we're up to six, seven, eight. But there's so much more room to grow. I was gonna say, which still isn't many, considering um, yeah. how big the city is. There's a lot of people and a lot of people who I think would like the product. So there's a lot of room to grow, and that's also why we're here too. Um, kind of, yeah, be beneficial to people who want nice, nicer coffee. So let's go back to the, the roast then. So, um, mm -hmm. firstly, like, how do you pick your beans? So we work with some very good importers, um, and they're the ones who have contact with farms. They bring in the beans. Uh, we're, you know, too small to. Be, Go to a farm and say we'll have that. Uh, we're still still growing, but is that an ambition? To definitely, to yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, we work with some great importers where they they send us screens. We talk about what what flavor we're after, what quality we're after, and, and we select the, the lineup together almost. And then, um, so I I, buy, I purchase all the beans myself. Yeah. Um, decide the lineup and all of that. And then once the beans come in, so then I roast them all. And pack them all and, to our cafes and the wholesale customers we have to, cool. and online. And do you uh, do you look for particular kind of varieties and um, uh, kind of locations? Do, do you mix it up or uh, you know? Yeah. So kind of the first things we look at are uh, seasonality and quality are the first things. So yeah. what's fresh? What's what's good? Uh, beyond that, then I try to get uh, a lineup that. Uh, appeals to all the customers, so 
some customers want a fruitier coffee, some people want a less fruity coffee, some people really want balance in their coffee. So I try to get a few that are representing that. You know, I don't have anything like um, I need a Colombian coffee on the you know on the lineup. But I don't, <laughs> I don't need that. You know, it's um, it's whatever I'm, I think our customers will like and what I'll like. Yeah. Um, when we first started roasting, I made the mistake of only ordering coffees that I wanted and. Uh, not every customer is me, no. so I had to, I had to develop a palette. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, I, I think it, at the time too, loads of fruity coffees were in season, and not everyone wants a fruity coffee. Yeah. So, um, yeah. No, that's cool. And um, do you have more than one at the same time, or coffees? Yeah, we normally have um, six to eight, depending on. I suppose just it's rotation. Yeah, because you roast it, so then you're gonna. Yeah. Um, so yeah. We, yeah. That's normally our lineup is about that. We do um, a minimum of kind of two espressos. So we have our house blend that, um, that you know, we blend to be the all-arounder. You know, grated milk stands up on its own. Yeah. Um, and then we have a single origin espresso that we do alongside it. So at both of our cafes, we offer both. Um, and to our wholesale customers, we offer both. Um, then for filter, it depends on what's tasting good. Normally around four, five, six different filter types. Um, and yeah, just whatever we think is interesting, tasting good, uh, what we like. And yeah, that normally changes about every two, three months. Okay. And how's that? So you're selling it, um, obviously, in your shops? Yep. Exclusively, do you, do you ever have guest roasts or is it exclusive to your roast? Um, in our shops, we, we kind of, we only do our own roast. Fair enough. Uh, so, uh, yeah. And, um, Outside of your shops, is it available in other shops? Is it available to buy to um, brew at home? Yeah, yeah, so the, the web shop sells everything. So uh, oh, yeah, if, yeah, you're, yeah. if you're buying it from home, you can get it uh, online on our yep. website. Um, as far as wholesale customers, yeah, we've got a few kind of dotted around the Birmingham area mainly, and then uh, you know a few of got uh, one in Suffolk and uh, yeah, cool. so it's other places. And it gets guested. Up. Yeah, it's been guested a couple times in London. So. Um, yeah, it, and that, that side's growing, so there's a few few local spots that have our coffee. So. And then lastly, if people want to, you know, see the show, see the coffee being roasted uh-huh. before they sort of drink that coffee, but before they drink coffee, what days, when when's best to come in? Normally uh, Monday, Tuesday, beginning Monday. of the week is when we normally roast. Um, All day or in the morning? Uh, it really varies, so okay. uh, kind of as needed. Um, Normally the, around noon is probably the safer bet because uh, I'm either getting ready to start or almost done. Yeah, uh, just just so come in regularly. Come in, yeah, just keep coming in. Just keep coming in yeah. and you're bound to catch us. Definitely. Like, okay. um, and sometimes I roast more too. I uh, roast more too uh, during the week. It just kind of depends. Um, yeah. yeah. It's a lot of fun. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks for being a such a bit part of the label. That's right. If uh, if you're in the Birmingham area and you want to see, you want to drink your your, your coffee freshly roasted on site, then Four Horse is the place place to come. Cool. Last thing you know, from and see you next time.